I might spell like somebody noticed back there the other day. There was a salt thing for salts for the wee angels uh, people. And they said, this salt shaker for the wee angles. <laughs> and I thought, I must have wrote that. <laughs> um, upper rooms. You know where our church provides upper room devotionals. The new ones are in. Uh, so if you want one of those. And then our Wednesday night Bible study for, on sharing, faith sharing, starts this week. Then there's one last announcement. Matt pulled a fast one this week. He and his, he and his, um, his precious significant other, who is going to have a baby, are getting married. He proposed to her, and so we want to be uh, listening for the news on that. And when the baby's born, I told him to text me so I can go and have prayer with him after that. So, But anyway, that's all the announcements. I'm going to turn it over to Matt, and he can lead us from here. Oh, it surprised me, too. She said yes. It was... <laughs> But luckily, we're um, on the 23rd. It's looking as if we're going to be able to be induced. And so I know that I've got probably another Sunday or two until I might be missing on the stage for just a couple of weeks. But know that I will be watching online. And so y'all got to be singing and everything, too, because I still love hearing it. But <laughs> y'all send up and sing along with us because we're going to praise the Lord this morning. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk. bow your head with me. Lord, we praise you this morning and we praise you for your name. We praise you for being able to call out to you and especially with this wonderful group of people that we have in here today. Because as we look around, 
in the midst of worshiping you, we just see all the love and affection that's being thrown up into the air for you, Lord, and just everything that you've done for this church alone, it just is unfathomable. And Lord, we just praise being able to come inside this room today and praise your name in your name. Amen. Then through the darkness 
Our hope is in God Almighty who has created us, redeemed us, and is with us. And let us share together now the affirmation of our faith as found in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father. From hence ye shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we go to the Lord in a time of prayer, I want to just share a few things that I know this morning. Uh, Fee is out because she's been having a stomach problem that's gotten kind of really rough for about four days in a row. Uh, Dulcie's not here with a migraine. Um, and somebody else has been sick, and I can't think of who else is not. Oh, Susan is not doing well today, so we need to remember her. And we also need to uh, pray for Kay. We're very glad Kay's back. But Kay has you know, been going through a tough time herself. Uh, you know, it, Richard has now gone to live in a, in a specialized place to help him. Uh, but I'm sure that's been very tough on Kay. So we need to remember Kay and support her. Uh, so remember her. But now, is y'all hear me make time uh, for uh, other prayer concerns? I hope that y'all will uh, feel free to lift those up. And also, uh, you know, when I get to the prayer concerns, we have a tendency to go to um, straight to our prayer concerns. But I also open that up for praises, too. So if you've got a praise you want to lift up, a thanks that you want to share, I uh, hope that you will feel free to do that in this time. So let's pray together. Almighty God, we just come before you and we praise you for this beautiful day you have given us for the fellowship together in brothers and sisters in Christ, for your Holy Spirit's presence with us, and Lord, for the sense of family that is, exists in this church. Just yesterday, Lord, with the men's group, seeing 18 guys here and that sense of fellowship that was there, but uh, it's just so awesome. And so I thank you for what you're doing in the life of this church. But God, there's one thing I would like to ask. I would like to ask that you help our church to really be focused on trying to get uh, new families. Lord, we thank you for everybody that's here. But God, our church desperately needs families with children. We need to see a new generation coming to know Jesus and Lord in just looking at this book that we many of the leadership team has been, been reading we're reminded that most people accept Jesus in their lives before they turn 18 and so Lord we need that we need to be making disciples of young people so Lord let every one of us when time comes to be willing to sacrifice of our time and our effort to bring kids and youth to this church not that older people aren't very important too but god we just need uh, in a generation where so many kids don't even know what a church is or who jesus is let us be the ones that get to introduce them father i just want to praise you for uh helping bridget uh, today is her last day last week was her last day to go to steel and today's her last day to go to walnut grove and i just praise you that you've been helping her and lord that you will continue to help her through this time of transition lord uh, you've heard some of the uh, concerns that i've mentioned this morning but i just think lord it is so important that this prayer not just be a pastor's prayer but a congregational prayer and so, Lord, I'm going to just be quiet so that my brothers and sisters can offer up praises and thank yous and offer up prayer concerns.
Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Who has a praise you want to offer up this morning? I'd like to thank one for our neighbor for being who they are, keeping his special place, his special people. And it's one of a kind. And we're so fortunate in having this facility. Um, the older uh, retired individuals to live out their lives. Yes. Any others? Paul well, Henderson, uh, Paulette Howell, um, Gail Chambers, uh, Bob Racknell, and um, Tony Lumpkin. Lord, I want to pray for Matt, his precious uh, wife to be, and his soon to be baby uh, born into this world that you will surround them with your grace. And Lord, uh, may our church be used to influence and to help them so that their child can grow up to know you. And now, Lord, I just ask that you prepare us for a time of giving of ourselves through our financial giving. And Lord, that you prepare our hearts for hear, to hear the word that you want us to hear today. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If our ushers will come forward, we might worship the Lord by the giving of our tithes and offerings. Y'all let that one slip your mind, didn't you? <laughs> That's okay. Hey, it just takes time to get used to. That's okay. You know, I find it's kind of interesting as we're taking up our offerings um, that when you kind of change things, even back to what you were used to, I forget that they weren't used to our old way. <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah, that's right. You know it, don't you, Gavin? Y'all notice I got the smaller baskets. I couldn't hold those big things from last week. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you give to us. And Lord, we take time to do what you've asked us to do, to return a portion back the blessings to you. And Lord, it is my sincere prayer that our church will find even more ways to reach out to the lost and hurting of this world. So use this money to bring praise to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we start, I want to ask y'all a quick question. It's been kind of bugging me. Um, have y'all been seeing the things on Facebook where people are, there's some kind of thing now, you can take a picture of yourself and it turns it into a cartoon? Can y'all tell me why mine always keeps coming up as a donkey? Okay, today's scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians 2, 13 through 16. When we tell you this, we do not use words of human wisdom. We speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's word to explain spiritual truths. 
But people who aren't Christian can't understand these truths from God's Spirit. All of it sounds foolish to them because only those who have the Spirit can understand what the Spirit means. We who have the Spirit understand these things, but others can't understand us at all. For how could they? For who can know what the Lord is thinking? And who can give Him counsel? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week I did some, uh, wanted to have something, an introduction to the sermon about the mind because of what we're going to be talking about. So I decided to just look up some things about the brain. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Just some little tidbits. Did you know that your brain is made up of 75% water? And that's why if you even get 2% dehydrated, it affects the way you think. So it's really important. Also, it triples in its size the first your first year of life. But as you get older, it begins to shrink. And I believe me, I think that's what's been happening with me. It has 100 billion neurons. That's the little special cells that communicate with you in your brain. The average brain generates 20 to 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thinking, y'all. Sleep is an absolute necessity, and if you go too long without sleep, it can kill you. But of all these thoughts that I talked about, they claim that 95% of them are repetitive thoughts and that 80% of them are negative. Now, how they know that, I don't know. But I want to ask you, have you ever tried to make your mind shut up? Okay. I had to do this one time, and we're going to do a little experiment as part of the sermon. I want everybody to close their eyes, and I am going to set us off. And for 60 seconds, you've got to try to make your mind completely silent. No thought, even not even the thought about thinking about having no thoughts. So wait till I tell you. Go. Was that the longest 60 seconds you ever spent? Now, I want you to be honest. Raise your hand if any thought at all, any thought came into your mind. I went to this thing one time a long time ago on spiritual growth, and they wanted us to be quiet like that for 30 minutes. I failed miserably. You know... I think that is probably one of the difficult things we can do in our lives to try to control our minds because while scientists can tell us all about our brains, they still don't completely understand how it is that we can think. You know, I was talking to Mitzi this morning, my dog. I said, Mitz, do you ever think about the future? Can you imagine yourself going to the beach I mean, think about it. From what we know, obviously dogs dream because you've seen them dream when they move and stuff. But can they imagine being somewhere else? 
You know, that is something that God has given us as human beings is the ability of having a mind. A mind that can look up and say, there must be someone higher than me. Poor old Mitz, all she worries about is whether she's going to get to go bye-bye or what's for dinner. That's all she worries about. But you know, this is something that we can't fully understand. It's something God gave to us. But unfortunately, because of the fallen nature of humanity, even our minds have been corrupted, as, is, as evidence when Cain killed his brother Abel. And Jesus said, when some Pharisees were fussing one time about him eating with unclean hands, he said, it's not what goes into the stomach and comes out that makes us a, a pure impure. He says it's the things that come out of the mouth which come from the heart, or in other words, mind, that make us evil. On our own, our mind is bent toward evil. We may not think about it, but our natural inclination is for sin. To do things that, that are pleasurable, but perhaps sinful. But Paul says that those who are in Christ have the mind of Christ. So I wanted to spend some time today, first of all, talking about what does it mean to have the mind of Christ and how do we get there? How, what kind of disciplines do we need to put in place? Because even though the Holy Spirit helps us, one thing I've learned about the Christian faith, I mean, I wished it was easier. I wish God would just, when you accepted Jesus, you were 100% perfect at the moment. But that's just not the way it works. He does do things in us, but we have to cooperate. And we have to set up disciplines in our lives to help us be like he wants us to be. So we're going to talk about first, what does it mean to have the mind of Christ? First of all, kind of tying into what I preached last week, the mind of Christ is pure. We talked about that last week. That it is difficult, but we can control our actions for the most part. But, so, we, we may not have problems with controlling, you know, not committing adulter, adultery or murder or so on and so forth. But not having sinful thoughts, well, that's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Jesus said this in Matthew 5. You've heard it that the law of Moses said, do not commit adultery. But I say, even one who looks at a woman or man, if it's a woman's case, with lust in his or her eyes, already committed adultery with them. Uh, you've heard that the law of Moses says, do not murder. And if you murder, you're commit, uh, if you murder, you are subject to the judgment. But I say, if you're angry with someone, you're subject to the judgment. Ew. Ew. And if you call someone an idiot, you're in danger of being brought forth the high council. And if you curse someone, you're in the danger of the fires of hell. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a good thing not to have sinful actions. All of we men in the room, thank you ladies, that y'all have chosen not to smack us with a cast iron pan on our heads. So we appreciate your refraining from sinful actions. But how many of you ladies have thought about it at least? You see my point? We are, when, to have the mind of Christ means we've got to nip those evil thoughts in the bud. And that is not too easy to do. Secondly, to have the mind of Christ is positive. For some reason, we seem to be drawn to the negative. Many of you, if you ever listen to the Eagles later on, Don Henley, one of the Eagles, Eagles singer. Uh, sang a song, gosh, it's been a long time ago, about dirty laundry. Y'all remember that song? He said, I make my living off the evening news. Give me something, something I can use. People love it when people lose. They love dirty laundry. And he went on to say that something that's truth, that we almost take a sick pleasure out of negative things. And we love to bellyache about them, don't we? 
in the news media. Man, that's how they make their living. They know that this about human nature. And so they'll print lies on the front page a lot of times. But then later on in the week, they'll retract it, but it'll be on the back page. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Because Jimmy gave me that point. He didn't know he even gave it to me the other day. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. We tend to be drawn toward negative stuff sometimes. Sometimes we tend to enjoy spreading rumors and get gossip. And our, sometimes we just kind of get caught up in negativity. And think about it. How many of us, if you were to raise your hands, struggle sometimes with negative thoughts about yourself? Someone I went to high school with posted on Facebook earlier this week, and she's a godly woman, uh, somebody that um, Mike and Fee and I went to school with. She said, and I quote because I don't know her name, sometimes I don't even think I'm saved. In other words, she felt so negative about herself that day, she even doubted her salvation. But the mind of Christ is not negative, it is positive. That's not to say that Jesus didn't get upset with people, especially people that were corrupt and doing wrong things. But for the most part, Jesus encouraged others. He remained positive because he knew who was in control. The mind of Christ is also sacrificial. The fallen human condition causes us to think about who first. That's who we tend to think about first and foremost, isn't it? And thus, when we collide with other people, so to speak, and they're thinking of themselves first, that's when we start having problems. But Paul reminds us that to develop the mind of Christ is to have a whole new mindset. It means to put the needs of others first. How do I know that? Remember in Philippians 2, I've talked to y'all this several weeks ago about Christological hymns that are in the New Testament of what the early, early church thought about Jesus. In Philippians 2, he says, Let that mind be in you that was in Christ, that though he was God in the flesh, he didn't consider that something to grasp, but instead he emptied himself and took on the form of a slave, dying on the cross for us. In other words, to have the mind of Christ is we put the needs of others first. And folks, I'm going to be telling you over the next several months and next year, you are going to be called on to sacrifice. What do I mean by that? If we want children back in this church, we're going to have to do more than just one or two little special events. We're going to have to step it up, folks. If we do not get children and youth, when all of us are gone, there won't be a Rainbow City First Methodist Church. We have got to do something. And it means if we have a VBS next year, it's going to take us all to pull it off. And are we willing to sacrifice of ourselves to help make a difference? The mind, also, lastly... The mind of Christ is courageous. We are living in what is called cancel culture. If you deviate from what the New Age movement says is right and you say it's wrong, then not only do they want to, be, uh, to ignore you, they want to shut you up. They want to make you not have a voice. They want you to sit back and be scared. But Jesus was never afraid to speak truth to power. He spoke up, even though it caused him a lot of problems speaking up. So, how do we get this mindset? How do we get this mindset of Jesus? This is where the discipline comes in. We First of all, we got to accept Christ to have him even live in our life and allow the Holy Spirit to come into us. because, And we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul says in Romans 12, 2, don't copy the customs of this world, but let God transfer you into a new person by changing the way you think. Did you hear that? It's not just something Holy Spirit does for you. It's something you've also got to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So what do we do to develop the mind of Christ? First of all, we got to dump 
the bad stuff. Paul tells us in Ephesians 4 that Christians must get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. But remember, Jesus said that behavior follows what goes on here first. So, as a matter of discipline, we have to dump the negative stuff. We have to choose to focus on the positive. There's actually, believe it or not, counselors that teach people to do that. It's called cognitive therapy. Learning how to quit thinking negatively. And folks, did you know that the Psalms even have examples of this? Psalm 42, listen to this one. This is cool to me. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. The good old days. I walked among the crowds of worshipers. Now I'm discouraged. Sounds like he's negative, right? But then listen to what it says later. But why am I discouraged? Why is my heart sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. He chooses to move from the negative to the positive. Which leads to the next point. After we dump the bad stuff, we got to fill it with good stuff. You know, you can rewire your brain by the way you think, but part of the way you redo that or reformat is what you put into your brain after you dump all this negative stuff. That's why I mentioned last week, Philippians 4, 8 says to focus on good, godly things. That's why it's important for us to read our Bibles, to hear what Jesus has to say, to fill our minds with God's precepts. It's why it's important for us to read other good, strong Christian authors. And then sometimes we just need to take time and notice the good stuff in life. Sometimes we all get so caught up in work, in our daily lives, that we just don't even notice the blessings God's given us. And yet... We bellyache and gripe and complain because our world, we think, is so bad. And yet, folks, there's still a lot of good in our world. And finally, not only do we dump the old stuff, fill it with the new stuff, we've got to protect our minds also. And what do I mean by that? Author Kent Hughes talks about Christian author Chuck Colson. Y'all may remember who he was. And he was having uh, dinner with one of the presidents of one of the major networks. And Colson said, you know, we Christians are getting so tired of the stuff y'all put on there. Can't you put some good, wholesome shows on TV anymore? After all, there's 50 million Christians in the United States. And you know what the president said, that president of the major network said? Well, we've tried. But did you know that when we put those good, wholesome shows on TV, the ratings drop? Where are your 50 million Christians, Colson? The point was, we, we watch the negative stuff, the sinful stuff, just as much as the lost world does. The point is... We can dump the old stuff, fill our minds with God's word, but if we also fill our minds with worldly stuff, expose them to that stuff, then guess what? It, it can act to draw us backwards. And instead of being more and more like Christ, we can become less and less like Christ. And folks, you'll lose your inner peace. All that negative stuff you see sometimes will make you feel depressed. And folks, I don't know who you watch on TV for news. I watch them both. But, you know, for the first time in about two weeks, because Bridget just keeps the TV on HGTV lots of mornings. Well, I, you know, I flipped it on one morning and thought, well, we'll just see what's on the news. Bad mistake. I mean, I admit it. We tend to watch Fox News the most. But, y'all, it was just one negative thing after another. And I thought, why did I do that? I, yeah, I want to know what's going on in the world, but dadgum if all that negative stuff just don't start your day off bad. Flip it off. Don't want... Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Turn, hit the button. <laughs> 
That was rough. <laughs> because, folks, there is a deliberate... <laughs> <laughs> there is a deliberate attack on Christian mindset today. The media is hell bent on destroying a Christian mindset. They want us to think life is not important. They want us to think marriage is not important. They want you to think the family is not important, that sexual ethics are not important. They want us to give up and cave in. And accept everything and say everything is okay, even if God's word says it's not. And that is why one of the pieces of spiritual armor that Paul talks about in Ephesians 6 is the helmet of salvation. Our minds, our brains need to be protected so that we can keep the mind of Christ. Satan wants us to expose negativity. He wants us to doubt our salvation. And he knows that if our minds are pulled away from Christ, our actions will be pulled away from Christ. And that's why Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy, spend your time and energy training yourselves for spiritual fitness. Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is much more important for it promises a reward in both this life and the next. If we want to have the minds of Christ and the actions of Christ, we start by accepting Jesus. We discipline our minds to be controlled in order that we might become just like Jesus. Do you have the mind of Christ? Would you like to have the mind of Christ? Are you willing to do what it takes to have the mind of Christ? It's your choice. It's my choice. Do we want it? Let's pray. Father, we are surrounded by sinfulness and negativity that actually can make us feel negative. And then if we as Christians, if all we do is become negative and, and, and talk about negative stuff all the time, then why should the world even want to become part of us? Instead, Lord, let us be reminded of the reason for our hope. Help us to develop the mind of Christ. Lord, if there's someone here today that has had things maybe going on in their mind that they need help with, if there's something going on in their lives that they need to pray about. Lord, we just make this time and we offer it up to you so that people can come forward if they need to to pray. We dedicate this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The altar is open if you have anything that you need to come pray about, anything going on in your life. Maybe you're having some struggles that nobody knows about and you need to pray about them. This is a great place to meet with God if you feel the need. a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and know oh, how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
Before I have the blessing, I would like to ask if y'all are back here, if y'all would help me to stack those chairs just right over here, because we have an Emmaus thing here this week, and I need those chairs cleared. You know, before I ask you about the blessing that I do, I love what Paul says in Romans for the blessing that y'all have heard me say a lot of times. And so what I'm going to say comes from the book of Romans. So will you receive a blessing? May the God of hope fill you with all joy so that you may overflow with hope and positivity forever. Amen.